Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Proud Peacock and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Spike Seltzer. And if you do enjoy this video, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. So for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, chrome orange, fluorescent purple, phthalo green, and chrome yellow. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk for drawing, but you can certainly use whatever drawing utensil you would like for our sketch. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round brush and I have a number three round brush. And throughout the painting process, I will refer to these as small, medium, and large. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do have a couple of additional resources for you that can help you throughout the painting process. What you're gonna find down there is you'll find a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to you know that fancy palette that I use and all the all good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is probably the easiest step of all time. I'm gonna be using my, my large brush and I'm gonna be painting my background with black paint. <laughs> So there's nothing tricky about this. I'm just going to load up my brush and I'm going to paint the entire background with black paint. Um, you can use different brush strokes. You can go left to right. You can go vertical, whatever works for you. You could even use a larger brush if you wanted to. Um, black really has a way of covering nicely. So you probably won't need more than one coat in order to um, get this entire area covered. But if you do find that you have streaks or you have thicker spots and thinner spots and you want to get a better, smoother coverage, for your background, you can certainly just do a second coat on top of this one. You would just get this, this um, coat on, let it dry, or you can dry it with a blow dryer and then do a second coat. However, it's probably not gonna be necessary for you to get a perfect coat for this first, um, for this background because we are painting so many things on top of this. This is really just providing us with a good color to um, put all of our details on top of. So I wouldn't really stress over having this background perfect. You can certainly, if, if, if an area is not covered 100%, Trust me when I say nobody's ever gonna notice <laughs> because you're gonna be putting so many things on top of this. And if you want to, if you want this to look all really nice and finished and have a, a nice professional look to it, you can take this black and actually paint the edges or the sides of your canvas th during this step. That way it'll look like the edges are nice and, and finished and it'll have that nice professional look to it. And then we are going to be using our chalk for the next step. So once you've got your background painted, you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to, take out your chalk and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're drawing the outline for our bird. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any writing utensil that you would like to that's um, perhaps easy to correct if you need to make corrections. I'm using uh, chalk because you're gonna be able to easily see it on my, on my canvas as well as it's very easy to make corrections. So how we're gonna do this is we are gonna start by making a circle which is gonna represent the basic shape for the head. I am going to be making mine, if, if this is the, I would say this is about the center of your canvas, I'm making mine a little bit to the right of that. And my circle is going to be about two, two and a half inches tall by about two, two and a half inches wide. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just something that's going to provide us with a good shape in order to um, paint the, the bird's head. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a little marker for the tip of my beak so I can um, do it of the length that I want. So I'm gonna make my beak about the same length as the length of that circle. So if you've got it maybe about two, two and a half inches, you could use your hand or something else as a measuring tool and kind of measure it and go diagonally down like this. And you can just put yourself a little bit of a marker in through there. I'm gonna connect my circle to that tip with a shape of a beak of sorts. So I'm gonna start about halfway in this circle and I'm gonna give myself a curved line that is going to meet the edge of that beak. So something like this. And it doesn't have to be a terribly, um, you know, severe curve. I'm actually gonna make mine a little bit less now that I've, I've um, determined what I wanna do. So something like that. And then I'm gonna come about halfway up the the circle on the right hand side to give myself the front part of the beak. And this is gonna be, have a couple of little bumps on it. So I'm gonna start about halfway up that beak, somewhere around there, or halfway up that circle. And I'm gonna come down in a diagonal line with a little bit of a curve like that. And then I'm gonna do another little bump that's going to give me the other portion of the beak, something like this. And again, you can you can adjust it if you feel you need to. Then I'm gonna come all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. I'm gonna come in from the right, maybe about three and a half, four inches, or a little bit to the right of my beak. So if you come straight down from your beak down to the bottom of your canvas, if you come over to the right, maybe about a half of an inch or an inch, make yourself a little bit of a marker. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the left hand side, I'm gonna come straight down from the left of my circle. So just travel straight down to the bottom of your canvas and go to the left of that, maybe about a half of an inch or so. Make yourself a little bit of a marker. This is gonna be the bottom um, of that chest area that we'll connect the head to. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my first line is gonna be from the bottom of my circle is gonna to come to this right um, marker. I'm going to curve it to the left a little bit and then curve it back out to the right which is going to give you the um, the prominent peacock chest. So I'm going to come a little bit to the left like this and then I'm going to have a gradual kind of slope down in through here and then I will puff it out just a little bit for that chest region. And of course you can you know adjust yours as much as you feel that you need to. And then for the other side, down here, this is gonna be the, the left side of the neck, obviously, and the back of the head. So I actually want the back of the head to come out a little bit farther than that initial circle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start my curve at the top of the head, and I'm gonna bump it out a little bit farther, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch farther than that circle, and then it's gonna come down and do a similar um, curve that I have on the left hand side. So here I go. I'm going to start up at the top of the head and I'm going to bump it out something like this. And I'm watching this curve on the right hand side so I can keep it of a similar nature, something like this. And then I'm going to bring it in here and then it's going to bump out something like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, there's a little piece, it, this neck as it goes into the plume behind um, behind the, the neck, I wanna see a little piece of this body right in through here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up about a third of the way up that body, and I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of 
what's going to be part of the blue area that kind of transcends into the, um, the big feather plume that we're going to be doing in a little while. Then I'm going to be doing the start of where the feathers come out of the body. It, I'm going to be I'm sectioning off an area that is almost the feathers in a concentrated fashion in a concentrated form behind the bird. So I'm going to come about halfway in my circle to the left of that is where I'm going to have this coming up from the from the back of the body and I'm just giving myself this like bumpy kind of almost like an oval type shape that's going to come and um, converge into this area in through here and it doesn't have to be anything perfect just something that we can have as a separating area and then we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step so if you need to do any tweaking on your outline feel free to do so and then you can get your medium brush out and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our quills for our feathers. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. The two colors that I'm using are brown and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a whole bunch of kind of chaotic lines that are going to be stemming from this section in through here because this is where all of the feathers are coming out of and expanding from. So at all times, every time I load my brush, I'm going to load it with white and brown. I'm not going to premix a color because I want to have diversity in the colors of these quills. So I have brown and white on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to make several, um, several quills that are far, that are spaced far apart initially so I can keep my brain correct while I'm doing the hundreds of other quills that I'm going to have. And I do this so I have a visual reference and I don't make them too um, out of sorts. So I know that they're all going to be splaying out of this central region. So if I just kind of use that thought, they're coming out of the central region, that's going to help me to make them come out in a, in a correct direction. And if I do them on you know, kind of evenly spaced apart, that's going to keep my brain straight as I'm doing the hundreds of other ones that I want to do. So I'm just doing slowly, I'm doing a few coming right out of the, you know, where I perceive them to be coming out of, or in a direction that I perceive them to be correctly coming out of. And then once I've got enough on here, and these ones would probably come down in this vicinity. Once I've got enough that can visually guide me, now I start going really fast. <laughs> so I have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just going to kind of make a ton of these. They could be, you know, thicker, they could be thinner. I reload my brush often. It's okay if they cross over one another. It's okay if they don't all connect to that center area. This is really just going to be background noise. Um, and add to the authenticity of these particular feathers because they really have a strong um, quill because they're so long and they're so beautiful and they, they need that stable base to them. So I'm just making sure that we've got a lot of firm quills that are going to um, stabilize these beautiful feathers that we're going to be putting on in a little bit. Um, and again, I'm using brown and white, so you probably detect that some of my um, quills are lighter or darker than others, which is exactly the point. And if I bump into my bird, which I have already done several times, <laughs> it's okay because we're going to be painting over that as well. I just want to make sure that I have natural looking curves or um, directions of these quills, so that's why I like to go fast because my intuition sometimes is a lot um, more on point than my um, direct thought. So if, I, if I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, I need this one to be exactly like this, it might not look as natural as my hand just saying, oh, well, they're coming out here. So just kind of flick your brush in this direction. So sometimes I really like to just let my hand and my intuition take over and that 
has bodes well for me at times and then once you've got as many quills as you feel that you want and again they can cross over one another they don't have to be exactly in the same direction you know laying down exactly equally spaced apart but once you've got as many as you feel looks good we are going to be utilizing the same paintbrush for the next step so i will be washing and drying it and getting ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for the main section of our bird. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm using just blue paint. So I'm going all the way up to my um, chalk and I'm painting the entire area of my head, of my beak, of my neck, and of that little spot near the I don't even know what to call that spot near the near the plume region I don't know it's a um, it's it's part of the body I'm sure like part of the the neck area but I, I don't know what the official anatomy anatomical name is I am painting my beak blue even though the beak of a um, peacock is not blue I am using it as a base coat so when I go to do all the beautiful details that surround the face, because there's going to be some blue and green stuff around there, this makes my job easier. So I could certainly separate out the color of the beak right now with a tan color or a gray color or something along that line, but I know the way that I paint, I want things to look like they belong together and they, and look like they go into each other naturally and I know that there's a lot of of those blue markings blue and green markings on the face our little feathers and stuff here around the beak so this is just gonna make my job a little bit easier um, and because I am using acrylic paint on a black canvas these colors this blue especially is gonna get a lot darker as it dries so just know that as as you're doing this It'll be pretty bright um, when it's wet, and as it dries, it's gonna get a lot darker, which I've planned for that. <laughs> so I wanted this to have some great dimension within um, the bird, so that's why I chose to do a nice black background on it. When I get in this section, again, I'm just going right up to the edge of my um, chalk mark, and I'm just bringing this whole section down with blue paint. You can leave a little bit of a space between this spot and this spot if you want to. It's not necessary. I will show you how to um, get those two spots to separate later. So if you just paint right over that, that's totally fine. Um, and then we are gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer on your bird with blue paint, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the first step to the feathers. So there's gonna be multiple steps that are gonna create these beautiful, alluring, colorful feathers, but to make them look a little bit more on the realistic side, I wanna incorporate some of the visual effects that we see when the when the bird has all of their feathers out so if you if you look at pictures of the the peacock with the plume all fully out what happens with parts of those feathers the little pieces along the edges of the feathers it gives it almost a spiral type effect behind those beautiful eyes of the feathers so we're going to create that spiral looking effect that is in fact created from the little um, tiny pieces of the sides of the feather. So I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to be using brown paint and I'm also going to be using a custom green that we're going to make that's going to look more along the lines of like a forest green. So the green that I have on my palette has a ton of blue in it. It looks like a dark teal kind of color. So I want to make that more into a um, like a forest green. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to mix it with a touch of orange 
that's going to take that blue out and it's going to make it look more of a natural type of a green. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. So I did fallow green, orange, yellow, and white, and I'm mixing it together so it turns into like a, let me see if I can get this on camera a little bit better, like a forest type green color. Just a more natural green than that fallow green. I want to use that fallow green when we get to um, the the fur, the fur, the and it, maybe it is fur, the fe the feathers, the chest feathers <laughs> of the bird. So that's why I'm choosing to use that as my main green on my palette. But for these pieces of the feathers, I want those to look a little bit more natural. So this is about where I'm going with my green, and I'm going to refer to it as a forest green. So once I've got that all nice and in play, I'm going to start making this spiral type effect. And this can be really messy. It can be um, these marks that you're making are just going around in a circle around the, the canvas. I'm gonna do some with green and I'm also gonna do some with brown. So what's gonna happen is you'll see little bits and pieces of them in front of the quills when we get through the whole painting process. This is gonna be one of those background effects that nobody's really going to notice that you um, did this detailed step behind it, but it will add to the to the more realistic look of the painting. Even though we're doing a nice painterly um, interpretation of it, we don't need to make it look like a photograph, but I am definitely utilizing the um, visual kind of cues that I was seeing when I was looking at the photographs. Because if we were to sit here and try and do every single little um, feather that it would that is actually making this happen in real life, we might be here for, I don't know, 962 days. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I found a way to give us the illusion of this in a nice quick fashion. So again, right now I'm just using my forest green and it doesn't have to go exactly in a, in a circular motion. You can certainly kind of flick up a couple in, in little different directions if you want to. I'm going to start picking up some of my brown paint as well. And now this is going to, I didn't wash my brush. This is just going to add another color or tone within um, within the, the background area for us. And again, I'm just doing it in this circular type fashion around the entire canvas. And then I'm going to do this until I feel like it's pretty full. I don't want to obviously cover up all of my quills, but I definitely want this to have a real, um, a real visual effect when when my painting's all done. So once you feel like you've got enough, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. Just make sure I've got some of this brown over here on the right side. Wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to this area in through here. And I think if I go back to my rooster knowledge days on a bird, this part might be called a saddle. So I might not be right, but I think that's where it is, what it's called, where all the feathers kind of come out of. So I'm gonna be making a custom color and the color that I'm going to be making is kind of like a light orange. I'm gonna use my dark chrome orange to create my lighter version. So I'm using my chrome orange, and I know if I just add white to it to make it lighter, it's gonna turn a little bit too pink on me, so I'm gonna add a touch of yellow to it as well. So I'm using orange, yellow, and white to create this light orange color. And this is gonna be a color that I'm gonna use throughout the painting in other areas, so you'll wanna make sure that you make a good amount of it. So once you've got your light orange color, that's about where I'm headed with mine, I am going to just color this area in with no fancy brush stroke. I'm just going to make sure that I get the entire area co colored in and I'm gonna just ripple it along the edges 
going all the way to my pen, my um, chalk mark. And if you don't hit your entire chalk mark, that's all right. And it's going to look streaky because you have black underneath it. Don't worry about that because we're going to be doing a whole lot of other stuff on top of it. But if you want it to have nice kind of texture to it and be a uniform kind of look, what you can do once you've got it on here, I'm just kind of um, doing my outline for a second here. Once you've got it on here, you can just kind of tap your brush and that's going to just give you a uniform kind of textured look along the whole thing, which is great when you're doing um, a base coat if you don't want there to be evident streaks per se where you have um, a distinct line. If you, if you maneuver your brush in almost like a dotting type fashion or a, uh, a dash or something along that line that's going to give it a visual texture and if you do that throughout the entire area that makes for a a nice finish for it so even when you're doing additional stuff on top of it it's going to have a good texture to it and a, a nice uniform look so once you've got that on there what you can do we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step um, and you don't even need to wash it because we're going to be using the same color so you can just get ready. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is the second step of our feathers. So I'm going to be using my medium brush and I'm going to be using that same pre-mixed kind of light orange color that we made and this is going to be the basic shape of that colored part that you see on the feathers. So these feathers that that distinct shape that we're also familiar with is kind of like an oval type shape maybe a little bit smaller at the top of the oval um, as opposed to the bottom of the oval and I'm going to call the top of the oval the part that's away from the bird and the bottom part is going to be the part that's towards the the base of the bird I'm going to have them a little bit smaller in through here and they're going to progressively get a bit larger as they go towards the edges of my canvas. You can have them very systematic or you can have them in a more chaotic fashion. I've seen it both ways so whatever um, works for you is totally fine. Your paint is probably going to be a little bit on the see-through side or streaky side um, which is okay you can totally do a couple of different layers if you want to or you can um, just let it happen because it's going to be all right we're going to be doing so many different things on this I, you can see i'm putting a couple towards the edge of my um, saddle as if they're coming right out of that which is which is fun and you can have them spaced again as far apart from each other as you want or as close as you want but i'm going to do some on the smaller side as they're closer to the bird and then as they get farther away from the bird I'll make them a little bit um, larger. So the base or the widest part of that oval should be again facing the bird and they're coming off of the um, uh, off of the quills but because we're going to have so much de detail to this you don't have to position them exactly on top of a quill. You just want them to go in the same direction as those quills are going. So as you can see I'm going to start to get a little bit wider or a little bit larger as I come towards the edge of my canvas and again they don't have to be perfect and they're probably going to be a little on the see-through side which which I'm all right with. This one's going to be a little bit smaller because it's closer to the base of the bird and again, I'm just kind of having fun putting them wherever I want them to be. You could certainly plan yours out a little bit more um, distinct than I am, but I'm just kind of using my own visual preference to put them wherever I want. Maybe I'll have a little one over in through here. I just kind of working my way away from the bird in a sense. You can, I suppose you could have some you know, poking out around the the head of the bird. You can have them really wherever you'd like them to be. They can be very uniform looking. I have seen them on the more oval side versus 
round, you can you can do them both ways. So if, if the round way is more visually appealing to you, you could make these just in a circular fashion. But um, I'm doing mine a little bit more in the oval sense with that top part being a little bit smaller. And I'm trying to get them a little bit larger as they're going away from the center of the bird. But I'm not terribly concerned if mine are perfect or not. So if I don't have my ratio exactly perfect, that's that's all right by me. I'm just trying to put them in the correct direction, which is um, fun for me. And I did also notice that they can be really large too. So if you want to have some of your bigger ones, even at the top, they could be really large, like almost the size of the, the bird's head. I've seen them. So it's totally up to you, however large you want to make them go. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. If you want to do a second layer on these, you can see I'm just kind of floating around, making sure I've got good coverage on them. But we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this um, base coat for this area on, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our beak. I'm gonna be using my small brush, and the colors that I'm going to be using are brown, white, black, and I might use a little bit of my pre-mixed orange color and maybe a little yellow, but I'll let you know as I get to those to to the, the details of it. I'm gonna start with just brown and white on my brush at the same time. So I'm not gonna pre-mix the color, I'm just gonna have them both on there, so this is gonna provide me with a good, um, just kind of base coat and outline for the beak. So we have these two distinct bumps in through here. This top bump is the housing for the nostril. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give myself the outline of my nostril. It's going to be kind of in a oval type shape in through here. And then once I've got that shape in place, now I'm going to kind of separate my beak from my head. So I'm going to take this color and I'm just going to do these light sketchy lines. This is going to be the top of the beak. It's going to come in through into the head. We'll get that to um, converge in towards the eye area in a minute. I'm going to bring this down in through here. We've got a, a mouth area that's going to come out in through there and then like this. So these are just kind of sketchy lines along the edge that we will get to blend in with the face in a few minutes. And then I'm just going to take the brown and the white and in a direction towards the beak, I'm going to color it in. So I'm using a directional brush stroke and you can see it's kind of stripey, which is great because these beaks have all kinds of lumps and bumps and um, various th details within them. So this is how I'm starting it with the brown and the white. I'm gonna put a little bit more brown on my brush just to get a base coat on here. I'm leaving the blue nostril for now. <laughs> and if yours ended up in a different formation along the edge, that's okay. That's why we kept the blue base. So that way, if yours is a little bit different, you'll have a nice base to work with and it will merge nicely in with the face. And then I'm just kind of getting this whole beak to be colored in here. I am going to add a bit more detail in a second, but I'm just getting a nice base coat here. And you can see that sometimes it's lighter, sometimes it's darker. It would make sense for it to be the lightest along the edge, but if it's not at this point, that's okay. Just get it colored in and I'll tell you how to adjust it in a minute here. So once I've got my base coat on here, I want to add a little bit of detail to it. So I need to know where the mouth is going to open. So I'm going to put a little bit of black and brown on my brush without washing my brush. And when you're doing this, um, because we're doing such little bits of information, you can use a tiny bit of water on your brush to give yourself some skinny lines or to allow them to blend in with one another. But don't be afraid if you do something that you don't like because you can always just let it dry for a minute and paint over it. So I'm gonna have my mouth coming somewhere in through here. So I have that dark color on my brush and really all I wanna do is give it a natural kind of curve along where the um, bottom edge of the beak is. 
then I know that there's a little dip um, behind the nostril a bit so I'm just putting some of that dark color in behind this nostril a bit and maybe if I want to or think that it's important I can put some more of that dark color in through there I'm going to add a bit of a um, I don't know if it's an air vent or something above the nose there's a little there's a little dip above the the nostril as well so I'm putting a little bit of dark darkness up in through here as well and then I'm going to go ahead and put some black inside that nostril because I don't think there's blue inside the nostril <laughs> so I'm just going to color my nostril with black and if you want there to look like there's some dimension to it you can put black on the right hand side and then maybe a little bit of brown on the left hand side but you still want it to look like it's deep in there so you can you know definitely black is going to be your your friend but if you um, put little bits of brown in there as well that will give it a little bit of texture and then i'm going to go ahead and color the um the beak with a little bit of brown maybe a touch of this orange color just to give it a little bit of warmth it doesn't have to be any um distinct color it's going to be light in nature but maybe i just kind of rub in a bit of a warmer tone in through here just so it adds um it almost looks like it's of a wood kind of color to me when i was looking at these beaks they weren't they weren't all yellow they weren't all brown they they were just kind of this light almost wood kind of color which is weird for a description on a bird beak but that's what I saw so and I'm gonna put maybe a little bit lighter of a of a I don't know a little yellow kind of tinge on the end of the nose but or the end of the beak but again you can kind of adjust these as you see fit maybe I'll put a little bit of this orange and brown up in this top little portion and you can see I'm just kind of adding these bits of um, warm colors throughout the beak I'm gonna make the lightest part um, where I feel that it bumps out the most so I just wiped my brush off of my paper towel and I picked up a bit of white because I want there to be a real evident contour to this beak so I'm gonna put extra brightness right in through here right in front of that nostril and then right behind the nostril as well or to the side of the nostril I've got a little bit of extra lightness going on in through here and you want them to kind of talk together talk to each other so if you can get them to blend in a little bit and then if you need to you can modify any little bits throughout the rest of it and you just kind of keep tweaking it until you feel like you've got it blended well enough and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful beak all nice and um all nice and painted we are going to get that beak to go into the face in a minute so we're just going to kind of stop right here for now and then on the next step we'll get these little pieces to travel into the face when we do the rest of the face so we're going to be using the small brush so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing the face i'm going to be using my small brush and the colors that i'm going to be using are, I'll be using this orange color. I'm also going to be using yellow, white, brown, black, blue, and maybe some green too. Some of the thalo green, not the forest green. Um, but I'll call them out as I'm using them. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to start it with a base coat for the eye and then I'm going to connect the beak to the head. It's already connected to the head, but in these peacocks, they have this, these beautiful m white markings around their eyes, which is where some of these little um, areas that I kind of protruded out, they're going to be connecting to these white markings around the eyes. They can be large markings or small markings. Think of like a dog that has different spots all over them. These peacocks have different um displays of these markings around their eyes so you can certainly have fun with yours it doesn't have to be exactly like mine so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to put my eye in place with that orangey color i'm having this a little bit up from or maybe diagonal from my nostril somewhere in this vicinity it's kind of like the size of maybe a p on my canvas but maybe yours is gonna be in a little bit different 
position or size, it's okay. If yours is a little bit larger or smaller than mine, it will all work out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect these little skin parts of the beak with whatever type of decorative markings that I would like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this one coming maybe in through here. I'm gonna wiggle my brush. I have brown and white on my brush. So this way I get a really nice natural type marking as opposed to a really clean line. I'm gonna have a little bit of a spot up in through here and then maybe I'll have this one kind of connecting all the way around the eye and again have fun with your markings they don't have to be exactly as mine they can be um, more dramatic or a little bit more subtle if you want them to be I'm going to get this to kind of connect in through here and then I am going to let's see do I want that to be maybe a little bit bigger a little bit bigger yeah and then what I'm going to do is I wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up a bit of brown and um, white, or excuse me, brown and my orange, and I'm adding almost um, what I would call like little skin pieces on the inside of, um, to the right of the eye, and then maybe a little bit to the left of the eye. These are just gonna add a little bit more dimension to the eye as it's um, sitting in the head. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna put some black paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a pupil within this eye. I'm gonna be coloring, um, putting more color on the eye in a minute, but I just wanna get this pupil started so it has a, has a minute to dry. So somewhere in the upper region is where I'm putting just a little black pupil. And I'm also gonna be using this black paint to give myself some shadows within um, this colored region that I have. So I've got a little bit of black paint on my brush. It doesn't have to be a lot of paint. Um, just a little bit of black will give you some great shadows. I'm gonna put a little bit of this in through here as well, and maybe a, a touch of the shadow underneath that, that chin, chin, or I don't know if it's a chin the beak going into the neck, <laughs> this area in through here. So right now I'm just kind of adding my shadowy areas with a little bit of black on my brush. And you could use black and brown or whatever um, darker color that you want. Maybe you use a darker blue, but right now I'm just adding these shadows from the objects on the face and also contour type shadows. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a contour shadow back here. I'm, I just picked up some blue to make sure this black blends into the blue in through there. And you can get it to go as you know full on detailed as you want. Now what I'm gonna do, oh, I wanna put a little bit of shadow up in this vicinity as well. So I just put a little bit more black on my brush getting these shadowy areas on in through here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more color to my eye. But first, <laughs> I want this to go up a little bit higher. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I'm gonna add some more color to my eye. So I'm going yellow and white on the right hand side in through here. So this is gonna be a nice bright area in the eye in through here, a little bit of yellow and white. And then I'm gonna pick up my original chrome orange. That's gonna be over on the left-hand side. And then I'm gonna just get them to blend in. So really what I'm going for is it a little bit darker on that left-hand side, lighter as it gets down towards the bottom of the eye. And then I'm gonna go pretty dark up at the top with a touch of brown. So I've got three colors kind of included in this eye um, as I've made it, but you could certainly have yours a little bit brighter or, you know, adding more contrast to it. You could add more white down at that bottom. I'm going to add a sparkle dot in a minute, but I'm just kind of getting that color to really pop on the eye. They have a, a, a whole assortment of different colored eyes. So I'm just going for one, a color that's going to really complement my painting. And typically an eye is going to be a little bit more shadowed or darker up at the top. I'm going to put a bit more color in these 
little skin areas. So you can, again, decorate yours as, as much as you want. You can have it as bright as you want or as subtle as you want. I'm going to start before I put that twinkle in the eye. I'm going to add the colors on the top of the head and within these um, feathery regions. So this is where I'm going to use my phthalo green and white as these little added speckled um, pieces of feathers all along this area. If you feel like you go too bright, you can always bring back some of your original blue or even dull it down with a touch of black, but this is going to give you that shimmery look to the, to the face, feathers, and, and um, all the details around it. I did it within this corner down here, and I'm also going to do it up at the top. I'm doing more of just like a polka dot type brush stroke, trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Um, this phthalo green on top of the blue really provides a beautiful um, effect. And because I am using it with white on my brush, I'm getting varying tonal values to it. So it's, it's you know, lighter in some areas and darker in other areas. I might add a bit more white on the tippy top just to give myself some more little sparkle to it and of course you can bring some down in front of the head and just uh, you just want it to make it, it look like it's naturally blending in with the rest of the bird if you feel like you need to do any more on this area i just picked up a little bit of blue and just making sure it, it polka dots well and that they look like they um, blend nicely together and now i'm going to just put my sparkle dot on so i'm washing and drying my little brush i'm adding a touch of white to my to my brush and i'm putting my sparkle dot in my eye in the upper region like this and then i'll just kind of um pull it down a little bit just to give it a little bit of um, more information other than just a dot on there. And then you can, of course, do any little modifications that you would like throughout this, um, throughout this face. If you feel like anything needs to be blended a bit more, feel free to do so. And then we are gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful face on here, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the third step to our feathers. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done a painting that has so many steps to one little area, but it's hopefully I won't get too confused at the number of steps for the feathers <laughs> with giving you the correct number that is. I'll know how to paint them, but I'm not sure I'll give you the right number all the time. So I think this is the third step. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the medium brush, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting two of the um, colors in place for the for the center it's going to be um we're going to do a yellow kind of outline and we're going to do the blue part that's going to be kind of the makings of the eye of the of the um of the feather and again you can alter the color variations as much as you want. We're just giving it a nice painterly kind of interpretation here. So the blue color, I want it to be very complementary to what is going to happen on the um, peacock's chest. So I'm going to be using blue, my phthalo green, and white to create a, a complementary blue for the, for, for the um, main chest area. So I'm taking a whole bunch of my blue and I'm gonna add some of my phthalo green to it. And then I'm gonna add a touch of white to it. So this is just gonna be a light, like teal blue kind of color. It's gonna be a little bit lighter than that blue and it's gonna be a little bit lighter than the green, but it's gonna be a combination of the both of them. So that way it really blends in well with the um, body of the bird. And of course, you can have variations of it as well. You could have it more green or more blue or have um, it looking lighter or darker or having variations of both colors in it. So now that I've got my color in through there, the eye of the, um, of the feather is 
towards the bottom or towards the, the wider part of the oval. So I'm not bringing it all the way to the bottom and I'm only gonna bring it up about halfway up that, that shape. So something like this, and it doesn't again have to be perfectly circular or oval, just something that is gonna work for that particular um, feather. And this one of course is hiding behind the saddle. But again, I'm keeping it away from the edge a little bit, so that way we can have those other colors incorporated along the edge of the, um, of the feather as well. And I'm just going around doing the entire, every single one of them. You might find that you want, that you want or need to do a second layer on these, depending on the type of paint that you're using. If it's a little bit too see-through for you, you can certainly add a second coat to it. It is gonna take on the color that's underneath it. So it will have a bit of that orange um, speaking to it as well. So a second coat would help to eliminate that if it's too overpowering for you. You can also, um, again, with a second coat, you could do more of the original cobalt blue color or more of the phthalo green, whatever is speaking to you as a pretty color, feel free to, to do it whatever um, value or shade you would like. And then when before I get done this step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an outline around each of these um, feathers with a vibrant yellow kind of color. And again, I'm just going with a color combination that I found to be attractive. There, but again, there is, peacocks come in different, different varieties, so you can find one that is um, appealing to you. So I'm gonna wash and dry my medium brush and I'm going to be using my yellow, but I know that my yellow is really see-through. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it. So I'm going yellow, my bright yellow, plus a tiny bit of white. I don't wanna change the, the power of that yellow so much, but I do want it to be not so see-through and the white is gonna help me to make it um, have better opacity to it. So once I've got my color that I want, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna just do a sketcherly kind of outline around each one of these um, feathers. So I'm leaving that orange showing, I'm leaving the blue showing, and I'm not terribly concerned if these are perfect. I just wanna get that beautiful color to um, be evident on here. And I don't know if you're noticing this or not, but I'm resting my palm on my canvas. I have a terribly shaky hand, and this is the way that I can control myself. So if, you, if you're noticing my, my palm is completely resting on my canvas, that is why. And that's sometimes why my hand gets in your way, <laughs> because I need to stabilize myself, or I can do it with my pinky. So this is this is just one of my techniques to, to keep myself in control here. And if you go outside of the orange and you end up having some of that black as your background, don't worry about it. Again, we've got lots of other things that we're gonna be doing around the edges of these feathers. And I am reloading my brush every almost every feather, so I have a nice thick um, coat of this yellow because I really want it to be nice and vibrant. And again, if you feel that you want to do two layers on it, that's totally fine. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got the outline of these beautiful feathers on here, you can put this medium brush away. I'm almost done here. You get your rhythm after a while. In the beginning, you go a little bit slower, but once you get to these edges, oh, can't miss this little guy over here. And yeah, I do recommend when you think you're done, step back for a minute and make sure that you didn't miss any of your beautiful um, feathers because I am notorious for doing that. I think that I'm all done and then I, you know, 
I feel like I'm ready to go on to the next step and realize, oh, darn it, you missed, you missed six of them or you missed one of them. So just kind of step back, take a look at it from a distance, make sure that you didn't miss any of these. And then you can put this medium brush away, take out your, oops, see, as I'm speaking, look at, I missed, I missed the blue on that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my yellow outline, wash my brush real quick and put my blue in the center. And then we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing the blue part of the body. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are black, blue, fallow green, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to build it from the dark to the light, and I will never have a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, and I'm going to put this on what I'm going to call the shadow side, which will be the left-hand side, and it's also going to be a little bit of a shadow um, where the front of the body kind of trails to the back, maybe a little bit down in through here. So I've got a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, and what I'm doing is I'm just almost dry brushing it onto the edge of the, the um, back of the bird. And I'm going to bring it a little bit in through here like this. And then I'm going to bring it down towards the bottom in through here. And then without washing my brush or adding another color, I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to get it to rub in to the, the neighboring blue paint. So I'm able to do this because I'm using a really firm brush, which is the bristle brush. But if you are using a softer brush, it might not be as easy for you to do, to rub it in like that. So you could use a touch of water or just pick up a little bit of that original blue and that will help you to get it to blend in a bit. You can also make sure that you have a good shadow up in through here. So if you need to add a bit in through there, I didn't wash my brush, I'm just using the remnants. Now what I'm gonna do, without washing my brush, I'm picking up a little bit of my cobalt blue to make sure that these are really nice and blended with one another. I know that the blue will get brighter the more layers I put on top of here because we um, originally, painted it on black, on a black surface, so the blue will be darker um, on that first layer. And the more I add layers to this blue, the brighter it will get. So I'm just making sure this kind of looks like it transitions over here with a bit of that blue on my brush with whatever the remnants of black were. And then as I move towards the um, upper portion of the of the chest, I'm going to start picking up a touch of my green paint as well. And this is, so right now I've got the, the darker blue with a little bit of the green on it, just to make sure I have a nice good coat on here. And again, I'm not using much paint at all. I just really am almost rubbing it on at this point, just to give myself a nice, solid base to which I'm going to put the fluffy feathers on in a second. I just want to make sure that I don't have any unpainted spots. So the blue and the green on my brush right now are helping to give me that nice base coat that I wanted. And now that I've got that, I'm going to use the blue and the green with a tiny bit of white paint. So I could even go for that color that I used on the center of there if I wanted to, which actually I think I'm gonna do that just to start. So I put a tiny bit of that on my brush and so little that I'm wiping it off on the side of my palette. And this is gonna start my little fluffy feathers within that chest. So I'm utilizing just the tip of my brush and I'm using it in kind of a curved type dashing, dash type motion to get the, these um, layers of feathers to just build upon each other. And as I want them to be more visible, I start adding a bit more white onto my brush. I'm being really cautious at this point because I don't want to overdo it. You can always just keep adding paint onto it. Once you go too light, it's, it's pretty tough to take it away. 
um, and unless you want to do a lot of work and let it dry. So I just keep adding a bit of white to my brush and I'm getting this area where I feel to be the lightest um, or have the most bump out, have the most contour to it. I'm adding the lightest of the colors in through there. And if you feel like you've gone too too much or too light, what you can always do, just pick up some of that original blue and green and just get it to slowly transition into the darker areas. Or if you've gone way too far, you can let it dry and do another layer on top of it of those original colors. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel because I want to make sure that this transitions nicely into the blue. So I'm just, I added a little bit more of the, um, the dark blue onto my brush and I'm just going to continue to get it to blend in here. And I know that it's going to get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm just making sure that I've got it all talking to each other nicely. And then I'm going to be using, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? I'm going to be using, I think I'm going to use my, my um, medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this beautiful chest area all nice and done and you're feeling like it's nice and almost like sparkly looking you can put your large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is the second step to our saddle so i'm going to use my medium brush the colors that i'm going to be using are my um forest green my yellow and white combination that I had here and maybe a little bit of my orange. So what I'm really doing is I'm going to just get a gradient that is going to sit behind my um, details of these feather tips that we'll be doing on a separate on a separate step. These are the makings of these beautiful feathers later. So they're going to incorporate those same colors within this whole area. So I also have, I want it to look like there's a contour or shape to it. So I'm going to have the right side lighter and the left side darker. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with my forest green. I don't want to get rid of all of this orange base color. That's going to just um, be kind of in intermingled with it. So what I'm going to do, oh, I forgot one of my little um, feathers right there. I'll get that in a little bit. But I'm, I've got my forest green. I'm really just going to be use, utilizing this as a, um, a, a tonal change. I want it to have, incorporate some of my leaf colors or my um, the feather, the green part of the feather color. So I just took a little bit of that green and I'm just rubbing it in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green plus a little bit of yellow and I'm going to get it to go progressively lighter as it goes towards that right hand side. So now what I'm doing, I'm going to pick up some of my yellow and white the, without washing my brush and what's going to happen, you're going to see that it's starting to get lighter and lighter. And I'm not coloring in the entire thing because I want some of that orange to be represented as well. And I'm going to attempt to get that top right hand section the lightest. So as I'm doing this, I'm just using the end of my brush and I'm kind of doing it in a circular motion, which is allowing it to give you the appearance of some texture within there. Um, and when I go up towards that right hand side, I don't know if I said I was going to be using white or not, but I'm going to use, pick up a little bit of white on my brush as well in a second here. Once I get up towards that tippy top right hand side, just making sure I get all the way right next to my bird. And if you bump into your bird, the, the blue section, it's okay. You can just make a little correction when you need to. I just picked up a touch of white. I want this top right hand corner to be the brightest. And then once you've got this step done, we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty base. Excellent, so wash and dry this medium brush. And get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're doing the green, the greenery 
around the feathers. <laughs> There's lots of parts to these feathers, and I and I don't know all the distinct names, but we're just going to give it uh, our our Michelle description. <laughs> so what I'm going to use my medium brush, and I'm going to be using as many shades of green as I want to have this these green pieces stand out. So it's in essence going to be that forest green that I used, only in lighter shades of it. So what I've done is I've taken my medium brush. And I have my forest green here. And you can make as many shades of it lighter as you want. You can add a little bit of yellow. You can add a little bit of white. Just make yourself a couple of different shades of it. Um, I do recommend at least two shades. So that way when you're doing this, you'll have um, some good dimensional elements to it. So there's my forest green and I just made a couple of other shades of it. And again, it doesn't have to be anything exactly like mine, but having those multiple shades is going to make it um, a nice easier process for you. So from what I um, know of a peacock's feather, the when it comes up from the the quill, the fed, the, this greenery part kind of wraps itself around the edge of the feather and kind of comes up. It is actually part of the feather, I'm sure, um, but it to me it looks like it's almost a separate little piece. So I'm coming up and you can come out, but you want to kind of encapsulate that particular feather. And I'm using just the tip of my brush and I'm going to go ahead and do them all with one of my greens and then I will just come back and do little hints of whatever that second tone of green is that I chose to do, probably a little bit lighter than the one that's on my brush right now. So I'm keeping it pretty systematic. I just kind of go around the feather, the colored part, and then just kind of bring it up in a pointy type fashion along the top of the feather. Again, I'm not really concerned how it totally connects inside um, with those quills. I'm just looking to give it my own um, painterly little adaptation of the way that I perceive these feathers to look. And um, I remember as a kid, I used to actually collect my, my peacock feathers, my grandfather um, had peacocks on his on his little country farm. He had peacocks and he had deer and cows and all kinds of fun stuff for us grandkids to play with. And so peacocks were one of those those animals that he he had for us to enjoy. So I loved the feathers. They were always so delicate looking with their vibrant colors. So I know that they come in in a variety of different. Um, colors which is super cool so however you want to depict yours is great and again I'm just kind of giving them this loose um, almost like fluffiness around the edges but you can see the color I'm choosing to use is definitely more visible um, than the original green that I used for the um, for that spiral type look that we did and when I go to do this second tone on top of this with the little, the um, the additional little added um, flicks that I'll be doing, you'll see that this is going to pop out even more. But right now I'm just kind of keeping it with that first um, tone of green that I elected to make, making sure, trying to make sure that I don't miss any of my, my um, I, I, I really want to call them flowers, but miss any of my feathers because they do, they do you know, speak to me as flowers do with their beautiful colors. And then I'm just going, oh, that was a lot of paint. That's all right. Um, I'm just going to get these couple ones. And you can see how I'm using a, you know, pretty systematic brush stroke as I go about here, bringing it towards the bottom and kind of flicking it as it goes towards the top. And you might find that a smaller brush works out well for you. I am using quite a bit of paint on the tip of my brush but I'm not pressing hard. So that way I am getting the natural little um, fibers of my brush to give me those beautiful little singular pieces of the feathers as they're going towards the top of that feather. So again, I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm kind of um, still just utilizing that 
the, the darker of the two greens that I have elected to make for this step. And then in a second, I will kind of fly around with the lighter version of it. And the reason why I'm just kind of systematically going with this one tone is so it looks pretty uniform throughout the entire painting. If I started to utilize the um, both greens at the same time, I could certainly have done that. Um, but I think this is going to provide me with better di better dimension since I'm doing um, them almost separate from one another. If I had done them um, together, I might have had one, you know, on the darker side and one on the lighter side, which wouldn't have been too bad. But I know that these can sometimes really look really pretty uniform as 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 the goes around the bird here. So. Now that I've got that one, now I'm just going to start picking up the lighter version. And on this lighter version, I'm not going to do it as much. So I'm really just going to kind of take my brush and do these little kind of flicks around the, um, around the center. And then that's going to give me all the dimension that I need on these. And then once you've got this step done, we're going to utilize our small brush for the next step. So I'm just going to kind of go around here with a C you can see this this is where this is where I, I begin to get oh so happy in my paintings when I've got these these last little um, vibrant kind of um, pieces of information that start to really get all of the work that we've done through the whole painting it starts to pay off when we put these final little details the feathers are almost done we've got just a, a couple of little tiny things left to go on the feathers um, but we're 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 in the home stretch on them i can i can feel them come into life now and then i am going to be switching to my small brush for the next step just getting a couple more little flicks in place here making sure that I've got as much of these brighter tones on here as I want and you can see that with this second color that I'm using I am being a little bit freer with my brush stroke just kind of letting it happen and not overdoing it I know that sometimes when we're doing layers of colors that each layer that we do, we tend to want to put more on to hide the last layer, but this is really just meant to be an accent to give these beautiful little feathers more dimension and to make you be able to see them and have them pop out in front of, um, oops, I just, I just painted into my bird a little bit. Um, they're just intended to give you that little extra bit of information. And again, we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can just put this medium brush away wherever you'd like. Take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are finishing our feathers. I'm going to be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black and purple. So we're going to be putting the, I guess, I think it's called the eye in the center of these um, feathers. So I'm going to use just a little bit of black paint and the, the eye of the particular kind that I'm doing is towards the top of this blue section. So, and it's almost in like a horseshoe type shape. So I've got a little bit of black on my brush and I'm just making it into like this horseshoe type or like a U type section. And then I'm gonna pick up a touch of purple and incorporate that purple in with it because um, the ones that I was looking at, they have these beautiful variations to them. They can look like they're clean lines or soft lines. So however you feel you want to distinguish this, you feel free to do so because they can, they can slowly, gradually move into the blue or it can be a nice clean line but I'm gonna do this horseshoe of sorts and if your paint is really thick you can certainly um, water down especially your black paint a little bit so that way you can get the colors to um, kind of gradually go into each other so I did my black now I'm picking up some of my purple and getting it to blend in a little bit and if you can't see your purple you could certainly um, 
put a second layer on if you want to. I'm just having mine as a little bit of a hint or a, a hue of the purple. You could um, take the purple and go outside of the blue area. So again, I did my black and I, if you want that purple to be more evident, you can go right outside that blue area a bit and you can, you know, get it to blend right in with your black if you want to. So again, you can get these to be as distinct as you want or as subtle as you want. I want a lot of that blue to remain evident. So I'm not going to overdo this black section because I really want that blue to still complement the rest of the painting. So I did my black. Now I'm picking up purple and I'm just going to kind of repeat this step until I have all of these um, eyes done. And if you get to a trouble spot and you're like, oh, I just, you know, that black, I want it to blend in more with the blue, just pick up some of your original blue and get it to blend in. You can, you know, you can sit here and fiddle with it as much as you want. You can have that black area larger if you want to or smaller, whatever is visually appealing to you. You could even get it to grow further outside of the blue. It's all, you know, again, what is, is working for you visually. You can um, have fun with the intensity of this, um, of this eye section. I think I want to, I like the idea of picking up some of my original blue and blending that in with the black, but you can, you know, have yours distinct or, oh yeah, those are looking pretty. All right, so I'm just going to kind of cruise along the rest of them. I have this little, these little tiny ones in through here so we're going to just put a little black in through there a little black in through here if you got smaller ones you can maybe hit a couple of them at the same time with that black on there then just wipe your brush off and pick up a little bit of purple to get the outside so you can you know utilize your own painting efficiency however it works with with your own um, kind of discipline and again you can if that purple is not representing itself dark enough for you or vibrant enough for you, you can certainly let it dry and have it um, go on again on a second coat. But I'm going to go ahead and do these up and through here. So again, I'm just kind of utilizing this horseshoe type shape, picking up, um, once I get the black on there, picking up some of my purple to get it to blend in. And my purple is not very prominent but I do want it to be represented a little bit so that's why I'm choosing to um, utilize it as well and you might want yours more vibrant than mine mine is really just kind of a subtle type um, accent to it but again it's going to be all up to you how you want it to um, to be bold or or subtle and if you want it to really you know blend in softly with the blue you can certainly do that as well and I'm just going to kind of keep cruising along here I am leaving some of that um, orange and yellow of course evident along the sides if you bring your eye right to the edge that's that's fine too um, but oops like that one <laughs> that one just went that one just grew a little bit really fast on me um, but you know, it's all going to be how your hand works, and if you wanted to um, blend in with those neighboring colors, you could do the black first on all of them, let the black dry, and then come back and add the purple along the edges. So again, you just kind of work with it the way that it um, is free and fun for you to do because there's no reason for this to be stressful. We just enjoy the process and if it comes out the way that we wanted it to, great. If we just enjoyed the process, that, <laughs> that works too. You know, sometimes we, we plan things out and they don't come out exactly as we want or they morph into something that is pleasantly, you know, wasn't expected but is, you know, very pleasantly accepted because we, we end up liking the end product more than we thought we would, which tends to happen when you enjoy the process of painting so I've just got a few more to go here and I might end up going back and and um, vamping or making my purple a little bit stronger but I'll wait for this to dry and see if there's see if I want to do um, any additional 
little layer to it, but I'm just kind of getting some of these blacks on here. And sometimes, again, if you, you could just do the black first and then come back and add the purple. I know my black stays wet for uh, a minute here, so I can certainly do two or three at the same time and then just come back and add that purple as it's drying. And again, my purple is very subtle, but you could have a, it's subtle because it's sitting next to, onto and next to that black. But if you wanted yours to be more vibrant and ha and you know have much more of a of a presence you could certainly do again multiple layers or you could have yours in a different type of purple whatever whatever works for you i'm going to get this to blend in a little bit with my blue and let's say pick up some of my purple oops that was a little bit too much making sure i have enough on my brush but not too much we don't want it to get too far away from me. And it's okay if you get the purple on the black and just get them to meld in with one another. It'll give you a beautiful value of the, of the, um, the eye of the, I almost called it a flower, the eye of the feather. And then I've just got these last couple ones to go. And then we are gonna use this same brush, the small brush, for the next step. So once you've got all of your eyes to your um, feathers, you can wash and dry this little brush and just get ready for the next step. Just got a couple more here. And again, if you feel that you want to fiddle with them anymore or add to them, oh, that purple was nice on that one. That's going to make me want more purple on them. Oh yeah, see now that I'm getting down to these last ones, I'm I'm seeing how, how different it would look if I put just a little bit more purple. So. I might, I might fiddle with mine just another minute or two, but we're going to use this small brush for the next step so you can just wash it, dry it, and get right in. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're finishing the saddle. I'm going to be using my small brush, and the colors that I'm using are black, yellow, and white. And I don't think I might use another color, but that's predominantly where I feel that my head is going to be going right now. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna first use some black, but I am watering down the black a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit of black and adding a touch of water into it because I want it to be like an ink consistency when I do this. This is in essence gonna be the shadow between like a thousand little feathers <laughs> on that saddle. So I want to have kind of narrow lines and I wanna kind of go fast. I'm gonna be doing these arcing type um, motion to get the illusion of little shadows throughout these feathers. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to have them a little bit closer to one another at the bottom and then wider um, at the top. So I've got my watered down black paint on my brush. And if you feel like you, you know, you're going about this and you're like, oh my God, I did too much. My line is too big. Don't worry about it. When we go to do the little highlights in a second, you'll be able to dull it down. So I've got my my mixture on my brush so i'm going to just do these little curved lines and again i'm just doing this to give it the illusion that we are in fact seeing the little separations between the um, feathers that are in this saddle i don't want to go too dramatic i don't want to have it too systematic i'm just giving the illusion here. If I wanted it to be more um, photorealistic, I would sit here and make sure every single one of them is in line and perfect, but I'm just going for a nice loose painterly interpretation. So that's why my brush is kind of going fast. I'm just doing the top side of an arcing kind of motion. That one was a little big, so you'll see, you'll see me disguise that one later. Um, and then once I've got enough of them on here that is making me pretty comfortable which definitely this is looking good i'm going to put a little bit more on this left hand side because i want this to look more like it's in the shadow so the darkness from these will will help me do that and then now that i've got as many on here as i would like i am going to wash and dry my brush so just washing and drying my little brush and now i'm going to put 
the little tips or highlights on top at the at the tippy tops of these feathers. So I'm going to be utilizing my yellow and white for some of them. And then this is my mixture that I made earlier for uh, the outsides. So that's just my original yellow with a touch of white in it so it's not so see-through. And I'm adding these little flecks of curved lines underneath those black areas. I'm going to use white. I'm going to do the same thing with white up on the top ones, but right now I'm just using my yellow and white to give these nice, vibrant little highlights. So I'm, t I'm putting them right next to those black curved marks. And I know that they're going to turn out a little bit darker as they dry. And I'm going to put more on the right side than I am on the left side. Because this left side is going into the shadows. I want to make sure that I've got enough right by the bird's um, neck in through there. And then as I get towards the top, especially the top right, I'm going to start to add some white. But I just want to make sure I've got enough of these little flecks in through here. That's looking pretty good. Making sure I've got some in through here. And you can see I'm not painting over the entire area. This is just meant to be little um, shimmering kind of tips of these feathers throughout the um, throughout the saddle. And then I'm going to put some white paint on my brush. I didn't even wash my brush. I'm just putting some white paint and this is going to add even brighter ones over on this right hand side. And then we are going to be using our small, no, let's use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry. Yeah, that looks good. Wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're um, doing the the thing on the top of the head. So I think it, the headpiece thing, that's at the top. I don't know, maybe it's a, a crown or a headdress or something. I don't know. Maybe he's going to a festival and he's got his beautiful headdress on the top. I don't know. But it's the, it's the fluffy stuff that's going to be poking out from the top of his head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, a base coat for the feathery part. Then we're going to make some um, of the quills, I guess, that are, are the stems that will meet his head, and then we'll put a little texture on it. So I'm going to, I'm using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are blue, phthalo green, white, and black. I'm going to start with just blue paint, and I'm going to give myself a polka dotted section where this is going to go. I've got it almost, it, if you split the difference between the top of your canvas and the top of the head, it's maybe a little bit um, less than half. So if this is half, maybe a little bit below there. And then I'm just kind of polka dotting this blue paint on here in almost like an arcing kind of shape. I don't want it to be really clean looking. I just want it to have a lot of texture. I've got it coming out a little bit further than his face on the right hand side. It's maybe about an inch to an inch and a half tall and then it just kind of arcs so in this fashion. So I don't have it straight across. I guess you could have it straight across but I'm using mine in a little bit of an arcing motion. Then I'm going to wash and dry my medium brush and I'm putting the little stems of sorts, whatever those are called, that are going to connect this to the head. I'm using brown and white paint on my brush at the same time, so that way I have a variety of light spots and dark spots, similar to how we did the quills. And they are why they are splayed out more at the top, and they kind of converge into a smaller area. So I'm going to just do one going from the head to the. Um, to the structure <laughs> in the center. And then I will start to kind of just splay them out like this. And if you run into a little bit of wet blue, don't worry about it. And I'm only gonna have it maybe about an inch or a half of an inch wide as it hits the head and maybe about, I don't know, 
uh, twice as wide where it hits the um, the fluffy part. <laughs> so we've got this in through here so you can see it's maybe about a half of an inch to an inch wide here and then about two inches in through there. And then I'm going to wash and dry my medium brush and I'm going to start putting the dimension on the fluffy part on top. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of black paint to put shadows underneath that blue, similar to how we did on the body. I just want there to be some dimension here. So I'm just dotting in a little bit of black paint underneath that blue and I'm getting it to kind of blend in with it a little bit. And if you can see through it in, in parts, that's great because that's going to mean you're just seeing through to the other side, which would totally happen on these um, little fluffy things. And then I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I don't want that black to overpower the rest of um, that section. And then I'm going to be using my phthalo green, blue, and maybe a little bit of white to add similar um, texture that I did on top of the head to add that to the top of this headpiece of sorts. So I'm really just using a polka dotted type brush stroke and my blue paint underneath is still a little wet so that is providing me with a great way to to get this textured effect. I'm making it lighter on the top and just kind of um, having not so bright of dots coming down where it meets that black area. And that's gonna give me the texture that I want. You can have it as fluffy as you want. If you wanna add more green or blue, feel free to do so. And then we have one little step left to go and it's gonna be with your small brush. So once you've got to this um, head thing, crown of sorts on here, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm actually gonna sign mine in the bottom left. And I think I'm gonna use some of that blue mixture that I used in the center of the, um, of the feathers. So I sign my name with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with the, your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like to sign it with is totally up to you. It's your painting, it's your identifying mark. You get to do it however you want to. And then that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful, colorful, proud peacock. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.